For those of you who are very good in math, I would like to derive the period of a simple pendulum using the conservation of mechanical energy. Now, if you're not very good in math, just forget about this. I derived the period of a pendulum in another way. Now I will do it using mechanical energy. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's cute. It's nice. You know, it shows you that physics works no matter how you approach it. Here's the pendulum. And the pendulum, say, is viewed when the angle is theta. So this is the equilibrium position of the pendulum, and the pendulum will ultimately swing all the way to an angle theta max as a length L. And the velocity at this point here, let's call this point B, is V of theta. So we have here point A, equilibrium, point B, and let's call this point D. If there is no friction of any kind, then the sum of potential energy and kinetic energy must be conserved here, here and here, must be the same, is a constant. I can always arbitrarily choose the level of gravitational potential energy and I call it U equals zero at A. So at point B, I would have to evaluate this distance H. This equals L cosine theta. So H equals L minus L cosine theta equals L times one minus cosine theta. So at that point B, MGH, remember Massachusetts General Hospital, that's the difference between potential energy between here and here, equals MG times L times one minus cosine theta. That is U at point B and the kinetic energy at that point B where the angle is theta equals one half m v theta squared. So this all holds for point B. Now in point A, u equals zero, and all the energy is in kinetic energy. In point D, the kinetic energy is zero, and all the energy is in gravitational potential energy. So now, I want to write down at point B, U plus kinetic energy is a constant. M G L times one minus cosine theta plus one half M V theta squared equals a constant. I call that equation number one. What is V theta? V theta is the same as d theta dt, which is the angular velocity, times L. This is the angular velocity for which very unfortunately sometimes people write omega, not to be confused with angular frequency, which is sometimes also called omega. And I like to write down this as theta dot times L. This d theta dt will change all the time. d theta dt is zero here and has a maximum value here. So now I want to take the derivative of equation number one, recognizing that phi theta is theta dot times L. Let's first write down this equation with the substitution. Mg L, one minus cosine theta, plus one half M times L squared times d theta dt squared equals a constant. And now I want to take the derivative. This part you may find difficult. So this is the U part and this is the kinetic energy part. This is a constant, so this is going to be zero if I take the time derivative. 
Now, MGL, the one has no effect. The cosine becomes a minus sine, but I have a minus here, so I get minus minus is plus sine theta, and then, of course, I have theta dot. I have to use the chain rule. Plus one half m l squared, and I have to use the, I have to take the derivatives of theta dot squared, so that gives me a two times theta dot times theta double dot. Chain rule equals zero. This is the UDT, and this is the kinetic energy dt. M cancels. One L goes. The two goes against the two. And here I have a theta dot, and here I have a theta dot. So the whole situation becomes extremely simple. And what do I end up with? I end up with g sine theta plus L theta dot, double dot, equals zero. Now for small angle approximation, sine theta is about the same as theta if theta is in radians. And so what do I find now? That theta double dot plus G over L times theta equals zero. And I say, yuppie! I hope I spell that UP correctly. UP, this must be a simple harmonic oscillator, because I recognize immediately theta double dot plus a constant time theta is zero. And in fact, I can immediately write down that the angular, angular frequency is the square root of G over L, and the period of oscillation, which is two pi divided by the angular frequency, equals two pi times the square root of L over G. And this is, of course, no surprise. This is a very familiar result. So you see that you can also derive the period of a simple harmonic oscillation in case of the pendulum, and you can often do that using the conservation of mechanical energy. Whichever method you prefer, it's up to you. It's clear that if the object is a simple harmonic oscillation in X, which it was, remember there was a, we called the equilibrium position x, this is plus x and this is minus x, if it is a simple harmonic oscillation in x, then it must also be a simple harmonic oscillation in theta because the sine of theta was x over L and for small angle approximation the sine of theta is theta. So anything that is a Simple harmonic oscillation in X will also be a simple harmonic oscillation in theta.